did you start diving? Because it was there. Because uh, <laughs> the uh, when I went to Scripps in '51, I saw a duck, uh, an amphibious two and a half ton truck, pull in uh, between the buildings, and a bunch of guys get on it, and, and they go on out in the water, and they've got tanks and things like that. And I asked them what was going on, and they told me. I said, I got to do that. So I climbed aboard the duck one day, and they said, you, you can't come, you weren't checked out yet. I said, that's fine, I'll just help out. So I went out with them, and after going out two or three times like that and bugging them, they finally said, okay, fine, we're going down, we've got an extra set of gear, you know how to put it on now. Uh, when you uh, get it on, come down in our bubbles. If your ears start to hurt, be careful because you can pop an eardrum. And oh yes, by the way, don't hold your breath coming up, it can kill you. <laughs> that was the total sum of my training. And uh, we dove without wetsuits. We dove in 55, 60 degree water uh, with just boxer shorts on and dove all winter long. We'd come up shaking so hard that when I'd go to class afterwards, I have illegible notes, which I still have down at the university. And uh, by God, we'd do it again the next day. I was first started diving. We took a diving physical with the uh, uh, local doctor for Scripps, and he said, "Son, he said your sinuses are so bad. He said I'm going to give you a prescription. Don't ever dive again." And of course, I followed him faithfully, <laughs> and uh, I took a diving physical on the USS Sperry uh, submarine tender. And one or two of the guys, when they put us on oxygen at 60 feet, one or two of the guys started tremors or problems and they took them off mm -hmm. oxygen immediately put them back on air and I went through that and I had no problems so presumably I'm reasonably fit for diving except for I'm 82 I'm beat up uh, uh, everything that can be wrong inside is wrong <laughs> but I, I'm at home in the water I just wish I could live in the water so I started a, tro a training program at Scripps in 1952 I said this is just simply not adequate for the number of people we have got now that want to dive. And I started a training program, and they gave me a little card. It said, uh, it was typewritten, it said Scripps uh, Diving Program, uh, instructor number, and then they wrote in number, no, instructor number one is typed, and they wrote in my name, Ray McAllister. And I, one of my deep regrets is that I didn't keep that, because that would have been proof that, that I may have been the first civilian dive instructor in the United States wow. in 1952. There were military divers at that time, uh, dive instructors, and I have heard, I think there was a Swedish gal that claimed to date back that far, but I haven't heard of anybody else that w w doing formal instruction. We did it in the La Jolla Beach and Tennis Pool. Great. We'd get down there and I'd have three guys training in the far end of the pool and I'd be up at this end kind of watching and I'd say to the old folks that were always gathered around, are you real frogmen? Yes ma'am, we are. So I'd say, wait a minute, I gotta go down and talk to them. So I'd go into water and go down and I'd buddy breathe with two or three of them in the far end of the pool and of course you couldn't see through the bubbles and everything so I'd do this for maybe five minutes and then I'd come back up. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk for a while long. And they thought, wow, <laughs> boy, he's been underwater for five minutes. What a, what a frog man. <laughs> I was a professor of ocean engineering up at FAU, and un unlike many of the other professors, I was a diver and actually working a, d a lot in the ocean. And I took all my summers off to work in the ocean. Consequence, I got to know an awful lot of people, the dive book, Diving locations made me uh, put me in contact with all the diving uh, um, stores and dive stores in the area, and a lot of the marine stores. And uh, while I was at FAU, I gave usually a couple of talks a week to anything from the American Association of Petroleum Geologists to the local Boy Scout Cub Scout troop, <laughs> and you know, from the old lady self improvement society to the. Uh, uh, Kiwanis and Rotary and things like that. So uh, that's how I got to be fairly well known. That and 54 years of diving. 
Uh, that's a, 54 years. That's a 54 long time. 54 years. I started in October 1951. 51, wow, that's a long time. All right, you know, it looks like you've seen a lot of changes over the years uh, with, with the gear. You know, how would you compare the, the older gear that you were using to the newer gear that we've got today? I suspect the modern gear is much easier to use, much safer to use, and so on. But as I say, I'm a lousy one to ask that question because having come up through the ranks and having used all that that old stuff, uh, round face plates that you couldn't do anything with, you couldn't squeeze your nose, um, things made of rubber that cracked, uh, you know, <laughs> things like that. Uh, I'm so used to, to equipment that, in fact, I usually get razzed about my equipment that it's so old and beat up that uh, uh, I don't have any lime green uh, things, I don't have matching colors and so on. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably not a good one, but I know the modern gear is a lot safer. And I know that uh, it's nice diving with a computer if you trust the computer, and I generally do. And I've had a number of things where people have come up to me and said, uh, What's that mean? 12 foot hammerhead. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but every time I've gone and looked for them, by the time they got to me and signaled to me, I got up there, the hammerhead was gone. But those were kind of interesting. By and large, if I see a huge shark with a white belly, I'm going to start our father, who art in heaven. If he wants me, he's got me. There's nothing I can do about a great white. Uh, they tell me bull sharks are about as bad as, as great whites in terms of attacking men. I've seen two bulls here down on the Tanaco Towers and they didn't make any passes at me, so I left them alone. The closest call I ever had really was with modern equipment. It was with a, a full face uh, mask where you could talk into it. And it flooded and it damn near drowned me. <laughs> if I hadn't <laughs> well, been diving for many years, uh, I would have panicked and probably bought the course. But uh, I stopped and I said, you can hold your breath now, relax. And, think this one through, and I did, and then I took off the mask and made a free ascent, and, and I put no, no sweat. Uh, I've run out of air at considerable depth several times. Uh, in Bermuda, I ran out of air at 204 feet, wow. and, uh, because I wanted to let my buddy, who had a full tank, I happened to have an empty tank when I went down, nearly empty, and I went, tried to go after my buddy, and pretty soon it was absolutely impossible. So I started to make a free ascent, and I got up to maybe 50 feet or something, and I knew I wasn't going to make a free ascent. So I took off my weight belt, and I had a sharp knife at the time. I don't usually have a sharp knife. And I cut off part of my weight belt and dropped it and came up. And they said I came out of the water about six feet <laughs> and uh, back in, and they lowered a tank to me, and I decompressed, uh, and uh, no ill effects. Uh, I haven't been bent to my knowledge. and. 54 years. Uh, I can remember back when it was nothing to have UDT come in and blow a channel for a cable into the uh, Navy base at, in Bermuda, right through the coral. Well, today we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that sort of thing. We'd figure out a way to do it. Even in wartime, we'd try to do it with the least possible damage to the reef. And we need to get everybody. I go out here and I ask 100 people on the street. I haven't done it, but I, if I did, 85, uh, how, how are our reefs offshore? Reefs? What reefs? Eighty-five of them would ask me, what reefs? Do we have reefs? Ten of them would say, well, I don't know, I, I know they're out there, and so forth. Five of them would say, I've been diving on them, and man, it's bad. And we have a, a real serious problem, and we need to, to take a hard look at it. For example, we need to probably stop dumping nutrients in the ocean with our ocean outfalls, and fertilizer uh, on a after a heavy rain going out the inlets and nourishing the plants, the algae that are doing so much damage offshore. How do you feel about these uh, you know, younger kids learning to dive now? You know, the teaching as young as 10, 11 years old. How do you feel about that? I don't have a problem with that if, if the teacher isn't in it just to make money, if the teacher's serious. I taught my kids when each one of them turned six in Bermuda. I took them down to Mangrove Bay where it was six feet deep for a big area in one end, and I taught them to scuba dive. And they only dived with me until probably they were 12 or 14 years old. And then I'd let the oldest, by that time, 
I'd let him dive with one of my buddies that I trusted completely. But uh, when I came here to Florida, my oldest boy, the, uh, the Department of Ocean Engineering at FAU put out a request for people that had some diving experience to be the chief diver. And my son applied for that. And they said, how many years have you been diving? He said, 20. He was then 26 years old. So they came to me and they said, what is this? Because he swore it was true. I said, that's right. I said, he started scuba diving at six. Ray, where do you see the sport going? It certainly is one of the most attractive sports uh, out there. Um, if you want to be different from the other guy, you go scuba diving. If you uh, want to do something exciting and, uh, and with an element of danger involved, you go diving. If you want to see the big critters, you go diving. Uh, I think an awful lot of people that don't want to jump out of airplanes and things like that uh, dive, and I know several that, that like to jump out of airplanes that also are crackerjack divers. So I, I don't, I see the sport, the only problem of course is uh, if you get weather. You get a summer with half a dozen hurricanes and the last month or so has been real bad on the dive shops. And every so often you get a year like that. I just don't want to see the dive shops go down the tube because of uh, bad weather, which you're very much subject to weather in the business. And uh, But I, I see a great future for it. I just wish I was young enough to start in all over at 30 and, and enjoy the blazes out of it.